Hello and welcome. Welcome to Nibbling Around Town. We are a brand new show here at SEC TV. You probably know this mug from Around the Town with Mark. Well, with my co-host, this is a new show that we're doing, and we're going to be featuring food and beverage from all over our area. So we hope that you're going to be hungry. If you're not hungry now, you will be at the end, and you're going to be thirsty. So, Mark Whalen, allow me to introduce my co-host, Elisa Kuppelman. Elisa? Pleasure. Thank you for joining us on our first premiere show. Yes. Uh, we're yes. so excited to uh, toast are, to the opening segment, open, and, to opening segment and to our wonderful guest. Opening segment and to our wonderful guest. Yes. Cheers. Welcome. It's a privilege having you guys here. And Mark. And here we go. Okay. Salute. Cheers. Too Welcome, everybody. Mm. You can see we've got some beautiful, beautiful food in front of us. And I'm telling you, this is good, too. You, you need to get a glass for yourself. Don't sure. you think? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Saison de Maison from Barleyhead Brewery. Um, it's a Saison IPA hybrid made with Columbus and Mosaic hops. Mm. And this is Drew Rogers, we, uh, the master brewery of uh, the wonderful Barleyhead Brewery in downtown Mystic. Um, you have to check it out. It's a really cool venue. Uh, can you rent it out even for special events? Can you on, on days that we're not open normally to the public. So we're open Thursday through Sunday. On, on Monday through Wednesday, we sometimes rent out to, to private parties. They're lining up already. I went on a rainy Thursday night, uh, middle of February, and there were lines out the door. So uh, I know you'll all be excited to check it out and continue going. And it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So. No, Please introduce our, our other guests. And our uh, chefs of the day, we have uh, Chad Hobart mm -hmm. and David Potty from Fryer Tux. They are the co-chefs of a fantastic, again, newer uh, restaurant. How, yeah. how old is We're your about restaurant? a little over seven months now. Seven months old. I went in undercover. I'm a shepherd's pie aficionado. I saw it on the menu. They didn't know who I was. Tasted it. Fantastic. They've agreed to be our first chefs on the show and today they'll be preparing your oh, specialties a, a smoked bruschetta which is an app that we're doing uh, and we have a shepherd's pie cool and drew will be uh pairing several of his mm. beers with each dish yeah. and finishing it off with a, a wow uh ending so oh yeah take yeah. it from there <clears throat> well I, I just want to say this is really refreshing oh thank you very much i mean it's 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 very different than than any beer that i've had before it's smooth yeah but yet very kind of a light refreshing it's kind of one of those ones that yeah. you really want to have on on well doesn't matter in front of a fireplace or on a sunny day absolutely yeah, yeah it's got it's a lot great. of uh, a lot of citrus notes banana pineapple i'm catching um, that. Yeah. Like that yeah 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 it's really 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 good Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Mm. Is this typically what you would serve before you would entertain a meal, or is this something you could pair with anything? This is a pretty, it's a pretty versatile beer. Um, it would go good before a meal. Uh, it would go well with spicy food, hearty food. Yeah. Right. Mm. Because it really has a nice smooth, a nice flow. Mm. It's not too overwhelming. Yeah, right. exactly. Let's go right. into the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, please. So... Oh, where yeah, do we so go from here? Let's let's talk about some of this wonderful food that we've got in front of us. The meal we wanted to pair with this one, the saison, is actually the shepherd's pie that we have here. Mm. The best, really, the best. <laughs> and so the ingredients that go into this, we have laid out here. We have um, a little bit of ground lamb that is cooked in a little bit of red wine. It goes with onion powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper. Mm. We throw into our corn mixture that goes on the next layer. We have sour cream cream cheese, corn, jalapenos, and we mix that all together. Probably simmer it for about 30 minutes. Throw that on the next layer, it's very good. It's got a little spicy kick to it. And then we'll throw some fried onion strings, which are shaved very thin. And we coat it in our own secret flour blend. Fry them for about 30 seconds, they get nice and crispy. Gives it a little crunch right in the middle. And then we throw some mashed potatoes right on top. And we hit it with a little bit of cheddar and then to finish it off, we hit it with the torch to give it a little crispiness. Cool. So we'll just show you that right here. Yeah, please do. I like the sound of that that uh, yeah. special secret flower. <laughs> yeah, right? You have That's to cool. like everyone in the kitchen, I think, when you do that. Does everyone like clear out when they see you? With the torch, Chad? No, no, we're, we're all... <laughs> up, Chad, with the torch. We probably all grew up as pyromaniacs if we're talking <laughs> okay. about it. Is we that get... a prerequisite for being a chef? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so. <laughs> because you got to stand by the fire, so... 
you know. We're, uh, we're pretty much at, in the kitchen for 15, 16 hours a day at 125 degrees. So it's Really? We're pretty much the temperature of a yeah. medium rare steak. I was going to say for 16 hours a day. <laughs> Whoa. Does everyone poke you make sure you're okay at the end of the day? No, no not really. No, you wouldn't mind it. They might explode. <laughs> <laughs> and then to finish it off, we just hit it with a little bit of parsley. Uh, and we send it out. Yum. And enjoy a nice meal. That's so exactly long. how it's prepared. It's a beautiful pub setting, and when you see that come out in its adorable pot with the cover on the side, it's, it just makes you want to dig in, let alone, mm -hmm. uh, you, I don't know if you can taste it, but just looking at the cutting board and the ingredients, well, the, you know what it tastes like. Yeah, I mean, the ingredients you know, is, is so unique to me on what I've known that goes into a shepherd's pie. Because yeah, tra traditionally guess... they use lamb, but it was Americanized and they brought it over here and used ground beef, which is what we're all used to. Mm -hmm. Lamb is much better. Lamb is the oh, actual traditional way better. to make shepherd's pie, so we had decided to go for that and it Good worked out really nice. Now how long do you bake it for? Um, we actually don't bake it, we make everything separate and then we put it into the dish as we're preparing it to put out. Wow. So we just throw it all in, heat so it all up separate, and then it. yeah, we put heat it right everything in, in saute pans, yeah. put it oh, all together. Okay. So each one is individually prepared. Yes. Oh, again, that's very Which is strange unique. because you don't want to just bake it because then it's gonna lose integrity as it sits throughout the night. True. If you just have one dish oh. prepared. A lot and, of the stuff that we do, oh, it's like we that. do everything from scratch. Right. We're, uh, scratch kitchen. Everything we make is farm know, to table. Farm to table. Yep. Uh, even our mayonnaise, we make it on you know on hand like. Everything's done from scratch. You make your so. own mayonnaise from scratch yeah, too. Every, everything, wow. every ingredient that we That's... can possibly do, we make from scratch. But it's, it's a very challenging kitchen. But it's, right. That's why you in the kitchen for fifteen hours a day. Yes. Yeah. 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 And honestly, as yeah. a patron, I can tell you, sitting there, it's not a long wait. You would think this would take quite a while. Maybe I don't want to give a time frame, but before you knew it, it was in front of you, and mm -hmm. I had no idea it was made from scratch. So, yeah. kudos to you because you. it's you. fresh yeah. right there. I didn't realize that you used the torch and. It's wonderful to see what you do. Yeah. Well, and I've only known you for a short time here, and I can tell your enthusiasm is 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 really spot on for for what you do, mm -hmm. and I, I'm sure that that love of what you do comes out on the plate and the finished product. Yeah, of too. course, love it, love it. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. I can tell. Well, I've. Mark, what did you do? <laughs> oh, what did you do? Take care of that. Uh, I I'm in high school. school. <laughs> what do you think, at a bar? This is like. <laughs> I, not, okay, I have to. Let's catch up with Mark. It wasn't me, everybody. I dropped my glass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like, there's a hole in it. Yeah, that's it. See, yeah, right there. Glad you noticed it's that. It's hard to keep up with these guys. Let me tell you, you got a tough job, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna oh. try. Yeah, and uh, oh, great. And and what are some of the other goodies that we're we're looking at here? Do you want to talk about it? Or we're gonna, gonna introduce one of the beers that we have, that yeah, we have here that we're gonna pair with. Oh, uh, okay, great. With this great bruschetta. So this beer is oat wine. Um, it's made with locally sourced crystal oats um, from the Connecticut River Valley, which okay. give it a um, sort of white wine raisin character. Um, and then it finishes, oop, there we go. It's gorgeous. And then it finishes, you, uh, yeah, I got you. Um, with uh, the citrus finish from the dry hops. How long is the process? When it's, does it take before it's ready to? Enjoy uh, as we are. The, the beer takes at least two weeks to go through fermentation and cellaring. Um, and then it depends, um, you know, from there what style you're making. It could take between uh, two and about eight weeks altogether. To, okay. To go from the kettle to the glass. And tell us a little bit about, about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so I brought some of uh, the locally sourced grain that I use, um, some from Thrall malt up in Windsor, Connecticut, and some from uh, Valley Malt <clears throat> in Hadley, Mass. Uh, they both use grain that's grown in the Connecticut River Valley. Um, and then I brought some hops, Columbus hops, um, from the Pacific Northwest, where most of the hops in America are grown. Um, and yeah, these are some of the main components of beer. Wow, well, just so everyone can, can see what we're looking at here. And um, again, boy. Well, I guess we're into, uh, into Mitsio. Oh, <laughs> so boy. Cheers again. We were, we were yeah. enjoying this. And, and this beer, yeah. just so you know, I, I is, love uh, the show already. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know. There you careful. go. Yeah. All right.
Oh boy, everybody out there, you got to get some of this stuff too. It's 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 really oh, is really that good. Smooth? Isn't that isn't it great? So yeah, it's very good. nice. I like it out of the the growler. Mm. When we tried it the other day, yeah, I just like the the glass flavor. You know, absolutely. Gives that, it that 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 fresh right. uh, draft. Yeah. Flavor. Can you yeah. explain the sizes? I'm a neophyte to beer. I understand this is yeah. called a. So this is a growler. Growler. It's basically half a gallon of beer that's uh, poured fresh off the draft. Okay. Yeah. We also sell howlers, which are 32 ounces or a quart, also fresh poured off draft. Mm. And then we, uh, we occasionally do cans. Um, we, we usually do 16 ounce cans. Is it a decision as to which way you're going to can or bottle? Yeah. Like you have or to like mentally canning say. Canning versus bottling. Right. I mean, that was definitely a decision that we had to make. Uh, we bought a very, very small, because we're a nano brewery, which means we have a capacity of about 60 gallons per batch, which is very small for beer. Okay. Um, so we got this uh, can seamer that does one can at a time. We fill a can, we seam a can, we put it aside and put a label on it later. Uh, it's a very slow process, but we make a very small amount of beer, so it works. Well, what's I think it's very cool, too, because this, this beer that we had previously is so, so refreshing and light and the way you bottle this and you know I don't know how people can see on the that it, it even the can the style of the can and the look that you've created um, sort of gives you a, a little bit of a hint as to what's inside thank mm. you thank you my wife designed that label she did she really she the watercolors oh, for nice. it and everything. oh really? I'm just thinking put the hand in hit the boat okay. yeah. well if, the if not you'd be in real trouble later right, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> lovely and and also the growler is that the like, yeah so the growler and then the smaller one which I don't have is a howler and then the yeah the 16 ounce tall now for lifespan is it you have to drink it as we are like immediately within an hour a growler should be more like me drinking Fresh. Yeah, minute. <laughs> Fresh. Especially once you open it, yeah. then the clock is really ticking. So much like wine. So much like wine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or even you know like sharp, like a uh, um, champagne or a carbonated wine of some kind because it's going to lose its fizz among other things. I, I I one comment on that. Good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. <clears throat> so now we should move on to this magnificent. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is uh, our smoked uh, bruschetta dish. Uh, we we paired it with it. It's, uh, it's with the oat wine. It's a very complex taste with the smoke and with the oat wine. So the bruschetta is very easy to do at home. Uh, you know, you get your bread, which we, we sourced actually from a local bakery, Sift, which yeah. is right, almost oh, yeah. right next door to us. Sift, all on Water Street. All local, all, all, all on Water Street. Water Street, Water Street Warriors. Warriors right. Oh, I love that Water Street Warriors. <laughs> so it's very very easy to do at home. Uh, the ingredients. Uh, this garlic puree, uh, I, what I do is with the garlic, we slow roast it in olive oil, low simmer for about an hour to two hours with some time. Mm. And then, you know, we, you puree with that, you know, if you have an immersion blender, uh, you blend it up and that's what we, you know, that's like the spread for it. Uh, the mixture that we have under there, if you can see it, is mozzarella, uh, prosciutto, basil, tomatoes, a uh, little oil, salt and pepper. So it's very simple. That's it. It's just a mixture, and it's uh, the bruschetta. It's kind of like a, a starting appetizer. It originated in Italy, so it's you know very delicious. So we take it, and you can get a little hand blend, a little hand smoker right here. You can get it at any store or online. It's you know this is cheap. It's 15, 16 bucks. But we take it. So a little bit of wood chips. We have hickory. Right now. Oh, cool. So you can add different flavors. Wow. You can add different flavors. And give it a different taste. Go ahead, smoke right underneath there. I wish our kitchen was Check like this. Check this out. Now, was this no your invention? This. This yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wait a minute. Abracadabra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I wish the kitchen was like this. Where's my genie in a bottle? Is it done? <laughs> so you take, and you can let it smoke as long as you want. And, you know, the longer you leave it, obviously, the more smoky taste you'll get. Wow. But then... Right up. Oh, is that gorgeous? Oh, that's totally you have cool. it. Oh, that's magnificent. You can spread it. You know, spread the garlic on the bread. Put, you know, get your bruschetta so on. So it there. warms up. It's able to spread easily because yes. of that, and you have the smokiness flavor. Yes. That's magnificent. It, it, it's very beautifully tasting. It's it's great. It's. Uh, have you ever seen a, anything like that mm -hmm. <laughs> around here? Like no. no, no. I mean, no one does that. The really? presentation would be absolutely incredible. Yeah, right. And yeah. talk about yeah. presentation, you can tell already. Yeah, that's great. And between <laughs> a little pot and yeah. this. Guests love Smoke it. Alarm. You know, they, it's very interactive. A lot of our dishes are 
pretty, you know, a little bit interactive, and it's very neat. And people see this, and they're like, once it goes out, all yeah. the guests see it. Everybody it's like, what is that? What is that? It, it, I want it. For everyone real. smells it. It lights up the room. It's, it's like when we send one out, it's like the bane of our well, existence it, for the next half an hour. Like, <laughs> it's like coming out 20 percent. Let's go. Like, <laughs> well, if it's interactive, we have to interact. Have yeah, to do you want to try a bite? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. You want to put a little, little bit on for me? Okay. So do you do so the garlic generally puree you first? Would take, you would probably take this off. This is just more of a garnish. I wear them personally, but okay. <laughs> All right. And yeah, so you spread that on first, and then you get a little bit of the mixture. Garlic, and what else did you roast this with? Garlic and what? Uh, garlic and thyme. Yeah. And thyme. Mm. Okay. And then you take things. a little mm -hmm. pit. Very good. And there's prosciutto in here as well, did you say? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can use a spoon too. Okay. Helps out. All right. I made mine. Mark, why don't you... Uh, I will make, we'll make one. I'm oh, sure yeah. they've had 50 of them. So. I'll let you make one for me. Right. I'll wait. Okay. <clears throat> How cool is that? Oh, it's great. And do you have other dishes that are unusually uh, presented? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we actually have like a, uh, a scallop app that has cactus sauce mm -hmm. on it. It's very built very beautifully. Uh, if you, when, once it got brought out, it's, it has cactus salsa. Uh, lotus root that we deep fry. We cut it. it lotus root. Deep fry. Mm -hmm. So it's like Never a lot of seen? unique. Uh, Ingredients into it, but it's a beautifully plated dish, and so when it comes out, it's so like, you know, <clears throat> what is that? And, like, and I assume you both collaborated on the menu and, yes. and yes. Yep. so on and so forth. You beat me, Mark. Okay. Uh, All I'm right. Waiting for you. Mark, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. I was being proper. Okay. Not me. He's I, dribbling. Yeah. All right, here I go. And it waiting. pairs beautifully with the old wine that mm. he brewed. Oh, it's, yum. It's delicious. Mm. It does. Mm. The first thing I taste is the smokiness. Yeah. yeah. And right, it's like it's interesting first... how like most people actually use a smoker and smoke things for eight nine hours at a time, but it's almost like sometimes it's too much. Exactly. And this is just like a thirty second, and you're in and out. You can just leave it there if you want, but you still get that hint mm. uh, while not destroying the actual the flavor new, of the dish. This uh, is tool yeah. of the century well, it's here too, because yeah, I, I can I love garlic, but you know it's just just a hint of garlic. Yeah. It doesn't take away from the freshness of everything else, so you really taste. All the different ingredients, and they're very yeah. fresh. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's very not Eat your heart out, everybody. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And I can also see how Drew's uh, choice mm -hmm. of beer really pairs well with it because yeah. it's it just, does. it's like fine wine with, with the mm. proper right. steak. It's yeah. just a really nice the, flow. The oat wine has a lot of stronger flavors which hold up against the, against the smoke. And and we're actually, he's actually going to give us some, uh, some of his beer at our place, so we're going to actually have his yeah, beer on. Yeah, which will be the first time that I'm selling beer outside Yay! of my place. Oh, so, really? yeah, th so here's these the guys deal. are going to be our first our customers. Oh, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. You have to order exactly this because what you're pairing it with <laughs> is this. Yeah. I mean, it's like That's perfect. Right. It That's really, right. you taste every flavor. I taste every note. It's, it's lovely. Really good job pairing up. Thank you. So give, give us just quickly an idea, each of you, what got you started in the business that you're doing, beer making and, and, the, and the cooking and, you know, how, how did you find that love? Uh, well, I mean, for me, it was an obsession that started with home brewing, um, and then you know I quickly decided that this was a very good way to spend my time, and I should spend all of my time doing this. All right. Um, so better gotta, yet, if you could actually make some money on it, right? <laughs> doesn't hurt. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt. hurt. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. So, yeah. So that's my story. So yeah. I kind of fell into cooking by accident. I actually went to school for engineering and ended up moving to California for music. Did my whole thing out there for a little bit, came back, and was working as a dishwasher, and ended up moving up onto the line and figure out that that's what I loved. And for me, it's not about money, it's about doing what makes you happy. And cooking makes me happy because it's good food and you can make people happy, give them a good meal. Yeah, man. And that's kind of how I <laughs> fell into it. Excellent. Yeah, I, uh, when I first started, I, uh, actually I was a computer graphic designer when I first, when I first started working. And I just, I fell into cooking. I loved it. And I actually shifted over to do full time. You know, I wanted to be a chef. I, I, like, I knew I had a passion for it. And I just worked up. I actually landed a job at a, a vineyard with a, with a chef, uh, Harry Schwartz was his name. And he taught me a lot of the stuff I know. And then from there, it just spiraled. And, you know, I, I had such a passion for it. I just kept on reading books to learn how to cook and more and more. And I just eventually, you know, made it here. And it's, you know, it's very, it's very humbling. Everyone ha around us has been giving me so much support, like Chad and I, when we started cooking this, we won awards at our restaurant. 
got Best New Restaurant in Connecticut Magazine. Really? Congratulations. I didn't even know yeah. that when I knocked on your door. <laughs> I just knew it was good. <laughs> so Wonderful. we've been up for multiple awards, and it's just... Wonderful. It's, it's humbling that everyone's given us so much support like, mm -hmm. on our journey. Both of us, when we met at a different restaurant, we, like, we instantly became friends. And like, eventually, we're like, hey, you know, let's cook together. Let's, let's do something else. And we joined forces, and we you know, did this, and everything came out so wonderful. So like, it just sort of just clicked between the yeah, two of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You actually even look like brothers. I know. People <laughs> say that a lot. Actually, you, yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, when I first that. met them, I was confused because <laughs> I thought I kept seeing the same chef walk around. Oh. I'm like, wait a minute. When is that coming on? And why are you doing that? And we, it that's just... <laughs> funny. We constantly get that. Like, every day, someone's like, are you guys related? We're like, oh, no. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But what's so wonderful is it sounds, A, I mean, <clears throat> when you love what you do, you don't necessarily have to go to school for it. Right. You know, your passion is there. Yeah. Right. And, you know, you find venues in order for that to come out, whether it be, I don't know if you dreamed of being a brewmaster. Uh, I, I majored in philosophy. Okay, I, there I you go. I think I was, so you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never you know. Never know. <laughs> I majored in beer, criminal law. Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, but I believe if you follow your passion, you know, you find your way. Absolutely. And the fact that you have, the two of you have each other to grow with is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and It's as, fun. We have fun in the kitchen all the time. It's you know, it's it's stressful, but we absolutely have fun every day. We Sometimes go to work. we'll be dancing back there. No, no yeah. Well, then you're it's gonna great. call me because if you're dancing back there, Mark, you may come along. No, we have an open kitchen, so if you go there, it's almost like an open show. You get to see his cook, and you get to see his dance. And oh, actually, an open we have, kitchen. We actually yeah, really? I think on our website, there's actually a video of us dancing back there. <laughs> okay. Just like, like too. It's, it's uh, pretty yeah. funny. No, we have, we absolutely have fun back there, and that's we we put the love back in cooking, and that's you know, that's huge. Yeah. Now, with all the special events that go on in Mystic and around South, Southeastern Connecticut, do you plan special events, Brew? Do you, do, you, do you combine together, or Drew, will you be doing anything with Friar Tux? We that have would talked be... about doing an event uh, with Friar Tux, um, so I think it's a matter of time before we do that. We actually wanted to do a beer tasting dinner, like a pairing dinner with him. Yeah, yeah call, they call, usually call it like a tap takeover, where he'll yeah. come in and like, He'll go in and be behind the bar, maybe with one other person, and they'll kind of like do all that, and we'll pair things with what he's selling. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So, well, it's not set in stone, but it's it's a matter of time before it is. Yeah. Well, and for mm. our viewers to know, they're literally maybe uh, two point one minutes away from each other. You cross the street from. It's, is it considered Factory Square, or yeah, where exactly? Yeah, I'm, I'm in fact in one corner of Factory Square. Um, and then you guys are We're across the street right outside, and down like yeah, two yeah. storefronts. Now, are you on the, what was former the Emporium? How is yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. so we're in the basement of what was the Emporium. And above is just a gallery. The whole building is owned by the Art Association. Okay. Yeah. Oh, goody, there's more. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but I was too. silent. You're very haunted? Well, yeah. All right, tell us, tell us what you found. Yeah. Yeah. The is, there is a All right, come haunted. on. Yeah. So. We're, we're on right. the ghost tour. Let's hear. You uh, are? Yeah. So the so last it's, stop, because it's the most haunted. Can, can I interject? Day. A friend of mine used to work in the basement of the Emporium, where you guys have your restaurant now, and she's seen the ghost. Oh, okay. come on, bring yeah. on the beer. Let's so talk. Go on. Let's talk. <laughs> Tell me about the haunt, the ghost. Well, Who's the ghost? When we, first, uh, when we first opened up, Chad and I would always be there, and um, uh, we, had, we would have champagne bottles. Someone left the champagne bottles in the old kitchen. So we would set it down, and we both walked away for a second, and all of a sudden it just opened up. By right, itself. So, like we didn't itself, take yeah. anything off. It just, it just shot up. And what we found out was, I think one of the ghosts were, uh, she loved champagne. Right. <laughs> so one of our, another experiences, we were, we were sitting upstairs uh, building a shelf for our walk-in. And one of the doors opened up. And we're like, oh, that was weird. But then the next door opened the up. The next door opened as up. As if someone was walking right through. Like, and we're like, do, 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 do. A lot of weird yeah, things yeah. have so happened. So if you're into that, and it reminds me, when I went into their pub, it would remind me of a pub I found in Edinburgh several years ago. It had kind of that haunted mm. feeling where they have underground oh. caves. Yeah, and Mark, if you and I remember, when we met at the Bill Memorial Library, we talked about certain spirits that mm. have followed us. Yes. And an unusual thing happened when we were planning the show that um, is part of that. Yes. Maybe you want to elaborate on when that might happen. Because <laughs> well. we've, had, we've had an experience as well. Yeah, no, it, 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 was, it was wonderful. I mean, we decided to, you know, she's been on my show around the town with Mark before, uh, showcasing uh, uh, Noink Nibbles, and, and we walked out of the studio and we find this, this, this silver dime 
with heads up on, on the ground. It came from the it, sky. It just came from the sky. It was like, wow. A Liberty head, what was it, like 1930-something? It was, yeah, it was 1939, I think, if I remember correctly. We were sitting at a table, yeah. talking. I looked up, I looked back down, and they were in front of me. Just yeah. right on the table? It, it, right, right so on, in the middle of us. So mm. this whole thing about, and I believe, I have an old house in uh, Noank, uh, 1876, and I, I have a little spirit there who is very friendly. I mean, I've never felt afraid of it. I don't know how you felt. Some people... That's definitely like oh, how I feel yeah. at the restaurant. Like, They're like very enveloped. friendly. They're well, not trying to do anything. Well, just thinking, popping the champagne, what does that imply? <laughs> like a full oh, yeah. 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 Well, guys, we're, I, I, we're down to less than five minutes already. This has become... So, why don't you tell us a little yes. bit yeah. quick about so, what we got um, here? Yeah, one, two, three, Another okay. wonderful this delicious... This is uh, our latest beer that we're releasing this weekend. It's a New England-style IPA, which means that it's very hazy, very juicy. Uh, we call it fog bow, which is ah. an old sailor's <clears throat> term for the way the color that the light makes when it shines through the fog, which is mm. kind of a yellowish oh. color, sort of like this. So. Oh, that's really, really cool. And everybody. what is beautiful, truly, Drew, is that every, every uh, brew is different, is oh. coloring and, and oh. just so different. Yeah. For, yeah. for a nano brewery, you're doing amazing. Yeah, we, we like to make a lot of different things. We put out a new beer almost every week. We use a lot of local ingredients. This was made with um, <clears throat> uh, Connecticut sourced malt from Thrall Farms. Um, so, yeah, that's what we like to do. If people want to order beer, are you able to order yet online? Or? No. Okay. You've got to come to the bar right now. And well, until until we, we sell to. these guys a keg, right now, yeah. the only way to get our beer is to come and, and buy it from the brewery. And you named yourself the Water Street Warriors, is that it? <laughs> I like okay. that. Yeah. Well, well, not, I, we just coined the term. So. I love it. I love it. From the brewery oh. to Friar Tux, you can't go wrong. Any closing remarks from you gentlemen? We're, we're down to like, like less than two minutes. Well, I mean, I love anyone you know, to come down and enjoy us. It's like if you come down to Water Street, you know, we have a, a still wonderful restaurants. And, you know, with so much to do. Brewery. Yeah. It's a great area. Yeah. We're up and coming. The whole area has been becoming a food mecca for everybody. Everyone's doing a wonderful restaurant with a, you know, a, you know, way with food. That's amazing. The whole street, the whole town. Yeah, there's two more town. restaurants being built on Water Street right now. It's it's really wow. vibrant. Well, I want to. We're down to like like closing remarks now. I want to thank you, three of you, and I want to congratulate you on a wonderful product. All three of you uh, obviously love what you do, and it it comes through. And um, uh, Elisa. Love to have you as a co-host. Mark, you and I were meant to do this. I hope yes. that our viewers feel comfortable. If you know of a, uh, a chef, a restaurant, a fisherman, anyone involved in food and beverage that we can highlight and do it for you, please let us know. You can email us. We have yep. a website, Nibbling Around Town. You can like us, put comments in. Um, but we're here for you. So uh, our job is to expose new and upcoming and, and cool people like this yeah. and dedicated people. So and I hope you continue to join us. Yeah, please do. And I'm telling you, all, everything that we're showcasing here today is, is really, really wonderful. And we really encourage you to get down to these businesses, experience it for yourself. It's really true. It's really wonderful. And uh, very exciting to have the three of you as our, our launch guests yes, on Nibbling yes, Around yes. Town. Well, so happy, happy to be here. Yay. Thank you again. Cheers, okay, everybody. Cheers. cheers. Time. cheers. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, thank you for tuning thank in. Thank you. Come nibble around town with us. <laughs>